Okay, what's up guys? Game Fiend Fiend Ball Games here. Yeah, another week in wrestling has come to an end and thus it's time for another Drum Script Saturday. And if you're new here, this is a wrestling show where I just give my thoughts on this past uh, week in wrestling. And this week I want to start off with that fantastic match on Raw between Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton. I mean, that match was phenomenal. I'm not going to say it was a five-star match, but it was easily... Easily a four-star match, and the the ending was phenomenal. But I did the it was good ending, but the disaster kick you're supposed to lead with your feet, and for some reason he led with his head, therefore giving Orton the chance to RKO him. Because I guess for every big match they plan, the RKO has to come from literally out of nowhere, or else it doesn't count. So yeah. Fantastic match, four-star match. I'm going to say is that that match is the match of the week. If, yeah, just just find that match. That you, it's it's worth your 30 minutes. Just just find that match. Uh, other thoughts on this past week? I enjoyed the, the comical match with Zed Coulter, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, and Big E Langston with, I think, yeah, Ricardo Rodriguez wound up winning the match. I like the the quote-unquote fake injury that Zeb Coulter had about his knee was hurting, and then he saw Ricardo Rodriguez down, and then he got up, crawled, pinned him, and then AJ broke up the pin count. But that was just hilarious. What was even more hilarious is when um uh Ricardo Rodriguez threw the bucket at Big E Langston and Big E obviously no sold it because look at the size of Big E Langston and Ricardo Rodriguez threw threw a bucket at him. I mean it's is is not very effective. It's like it's like using slap on Steelix. It's just not gonna work. Other things that stood out to me this this week was uh with the shield and this whole story thing with Kane and Daniel Bryan. I, it's it's good, but at the end of SmackDown, as you guys saw as the, the Shield beat up Kane, that was a, also a great match, by the way. As the Shield beat up Kane, they grabbed the tag team titles, and I, I, they don't really necessarily need the tag titles to, to stay dominant. Now, WWE showing some like they actually want some type of gold. I don't think they necessarily need it. They just come in and do what they do. You hear the music, they come from the crowd, they mess people up, they say what they gotta say, and then Roman Reigns with his believe in the shield, and then they leave. I mean, what else is is perfect? But I guess WWE feels the need to give them or give the, the assumption that they're going for gold and well on the run they're having and the way they're booked looks like Kane and Daniel Bryan are going to lose the tag team titles at Extreme Rules which in my opinion they should have lost the tag team titles to Road Scholars a long time ago I feel that the, the Kane and Daniel Bryan thing has gone on for I think it's been overdue for the past two months but We'll see how WWE decides to put it. I feel that they should have lost the titles two months ago to Road Scholars. It looks like now they might lose it to the Shield. So we'll see what the plans on that. Other things that have stood out on me, this this Caitlyn mysterious love person, which I'm just gonna say is Cody Rhodes. Cause you know, the storyline before the Divas came back, I mean, excuse me, not the Divas, the Bellas, sorry. The Bellas came back was Cody Rhodes was kind of hitting on Caitlyn and now Caitlyn's getting mysterious gifts from out of nowhere yeah from out of nowhere and um I'm just gonna say it's Cody Rhodes WWE don't don't troll me and say it's Hornswoggle because that would that would suck but yeah I'm just gonna say it's Cody Rhodes I have no idea what direction this is gonna take if it's Cody Rhodes I don't see where they're going with this if it is Cody Rhodes, but it's just a random love story, I guess, because, you know, you can't, WWE can't go a long time without a mysterious love interest. 
Uh, the story feud between Alberto Del Rio, Dolph Ziggler, and the real American Jack Swagger. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know. It's dragging on. It's entertaining, but yet it's dragging on at the same time. Theodore Law came out on SmackDown, does what he does best. He restarted the match, a rematch two times, and he made it a tag team match both of those times. It's, I don't know, it just needs, it's just like, I want her, I want Extreme Rules to hurry up and get here so it could end, but then I don't want it to hurry up and get here because I'm not a fan of, of time moving fast. But it's like, we know Dolph Ziggler's gonna win because Jack Swagger has to go to court for a DWI. And Alberto Del Rio is cough, cough, injured his knee. So Dolph Ziggler is going against the man that going against men that all that have things against them. So realistically wise, Dolph should win. I mean, I'm not. It's gonna be. A, it should be a fantastic match, but you know, at the end of the, the end of the pay per view, Dolph Ziggler is gonna walk out the world heavyweight champion. Now for the whole Ryback and John Cena thing. Oh yeah, John Cena got got pinned by Dean Ambrose on Raw clean. Yeah, John Cena lost a match clean. Who would have thought? But um yeah, this feud I'm gonna have to say I like it, but then again the the road that they took I don't like. For instance, okay, we get the fact that John Cena got pinned cleanly on Raw, but the fact that WWE had to make some ridiculous injury, story injury for John Cena to even to give Ryback any amount of more odds that he might win the match at Extreme Rules. I kind of don't like. Like, if Ryback wins cleanly, she's just going to come, oh, I was hurt. And then, yeah. They, WWE, you really can't just let Cena just lose without any gimmicks. There's always some type of gimmick. There's, like, I've, w, this is the, I've never seen a company protect their number one star and his, the number one star in Cena, like, you know, saying, no, I want it done like this so I can protect. Cena is just doing what he's told. It's, like, it's not like Hulk Hogan, who wouldn't have done half the things behind the scenes and extra that, that John Cena is doing. So it's not like John Cena was like, okay, I need protection for my character. You need to come up with, like, a fake injury so I can still look dominant when I get my title rematch if you still have me lose the title. No. WWE is protecting John Cena for... For, I, get, I get he's the number one guy, I get he brings in the money, I get, but you don't have to protect him, like, come on, a fake injury? Like, if you want, if you, WWE, if you want Ryback to win, just to test to see how good he would be as a heel champion, then why not just have him beat Super Cena and see how it goes from that? You don't have to come up with some, some fake injury just to give Ryback a chance and say, oh, look, Cena's not 100%, quote-unquote. That means Ryback has a bigger chance of winning. And then if Super Cena does win, it looks right. It looks, it looks Ryback look like shit. I mean, excuse my language, but you're trying to build Ryback as a dominant heel, and then you have it written that John Cena's not 100%. And then the the the, the non hundred percent John Cena beats a hundred percent Ryback. That's gonna make Ryback look like look like shit if he loses the match. I'm sorry, I, excuse me for cursing, but that's just how I feel about it. I mean, you don't you didn't need an injury gimmick there. You you just did it. Uh, other notes that stood out to me on this week: uh, Chris Jericho was on NXT, proving that he'll do anything and anything to help promote young talent. I think he went against Brad Pride Watt, 
who was AKA Husky Harris, and the Pride Watt character is phenomenal. They made him a hillbilly psycho. That character is phenomenal he has in NXT. If you don't watch NXT, I suggest you, you watch this one. The main event was Chris Jericho versus um, Pride Watt, and it was a great match. Like, it was... I'm, if, if, if Watt was on the main roster, that was a pay-per-view type of match. It was a great match. Like, Chris Jericho is the man. He'll do anything to help young talent. What what main eventer you know would, voluntar would voluntarily go on NXT to help young talent in a match? Like, Chris Jericho is the man. What, you know people say, oh, well, like, they say, oh, The Rock has done it all, John Cena has done it all. I look at, uh, Chris Jericho has done it all. Putting it over young talent, creating his own, oh, creator has done for me. I'll just make my own spots, I'll feud with my own people. Like, the only storyline I remember off the top of my head that was 100% Chris Jericho and the person that he was working with that they wrote, I think it was back in 2005. Or 2006, because I was still in high school, so it had to be 2005, 2006. It couldn't have been 2007. The whole feud with Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels' wife, and Chris Jericho. And when Chris Jericho took the Titan Tron 3000, excuse me, the Jericho 3000, and smashed it in the Shawn Michaels' face. That whole storyline was was Chris Jericho. He even said it in the, the his DVD. Fantastic. Chris Jericho is just is just phenomenal. And I don't want to leave out the whole Mark Henry versus Sheamus feud and the Shame and uh, Mark Henry doing the series challenge of events. I feel that with the rope challenges and the, the arm the arm wrestling challenges, I feel that they should have combined that with the Ryback feud when they were feuding. They should have had more of challenges that instead of the uh, the bench pressing thing. But that's going to wrap this up for this week's Drama Script of Saturday. I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. Uh, feel free to leave your thoughts about your thoughts on this past week in wrestling. And remember, guys, there will always be a Drama Script Saturday every Saturday. And the way to follow and contact me is in the description, be description box below. And I'm Game Free for All Games, guys, and I'm signing out of here. Later, guys. Peace. Until next Saturday.